I'm Bill Hanley, born in Medford, Massachusetts in 1937. Hanley Sound is a sound company started in the early 1950s. There was no marketplace. It was just starting. What I believe Hanley Sound did was turned what was PA, for the most part, into concert sound. I started working for Hanley Sound in 1966. At that point, I was uh, learning. The quality was picking up, and the sound systems that were in the theaters, that's where I got all the good equipment to really do stuff on the run. Stan Goldstein called me up, asked me about doing the sound for this big event. Then there was buzz in the industry about it, and I went, heard about Michael Lang and went to his office on Avenue of Americas in New York. He wouldn't give me enough money to do it the way I wanted to do it. I had to do what I could afford to do it and make it happen well. It was a mad scramble to get everything together in time. We went out to look at the new site at Max's farm. I walked the field and studied the whole area and then went back and designed the sound system. The only problem with it was that there were pockets that were dug out in the hill and uh, I had to get high enough to get sound into them. I treat sound like light. And if you can't see the light, then it's not there. The sound system was staged left stage right, probably 50, 60 feet off of the stage. And I laid the two very tall towers up and then they went back and built special speaker systems to get enough energy to the top of the hill. The upper level thing was special. The lower level stuff was the stuff we were using at Newport in that design. The sound system at Woodstock was somewhere around 10 to 12,000 watts. I mean, I set up for 100,000 people, not 600,000. The morning before they actually started, I was putting things together in Medford. Bill called and said, I know I'm going to need X, Y, and Z. They had a plane for me. I left Hanscom Field at approximately 2 o'clock in the morning on a private plane. I arrived approximately at 5 o'clock in the morning on Friday. One of the guys came out on a motorcycle, and the key pieces that I had were strapped on his back and strapped on the motorcycle, and that went in. Now, I'm still sitting at the airport. They were bringing Axe in with the helicopters that were there, but I wasn't considered important, so therefore they couldn't get me in. The news crew that I had worked with before out of New York had a helicopter. They saw me and I told them, I said, is that your helicopter? And I had a vantage point that probably no other person, certainly on the sound crew, had. The concert was underway and I could see what was going on down below. For me to watch it was so breathtaking. I n never saw anything that big. It was so big, it was special. And the kids were so well behaved. It was a very wonderful happening to me. Everybody was getting along. We were always prepared for rain and there was always tarps and coverings and things of that nature. It looks like we're gonna get a little bit of rain, so you better cover up. We would spray the audio connectors with a CRC formula, which is very similar to WD-40 today, and that would displace water. So consequently, uh, the connectors didn't get wet and we didn't have buzz problems, or if we did, then we could go back and we could do whatever was necessary in order to eliminate that. 
the recordings were done in a one of the vans right next to the stage. I did the whole, recorded the whole thing in a track and we were using Unidyne microphones. We kept it very tight to the instruments that were being picked up. After doing Sound at Woodstock, I couldn't think of anything that I really wanted to do after that. Where do you go? The largest sound system, the largest crowd in history. What do you do? The biggest names in the industry. I stayed with the company until approximately 1972. The sound was the thing that held the show together. And then the recording held it for the aftermath. There's now a plaque where the home office was. Uh, and now it's a Dunkin' Donuts. 